Welcome science, Mr. Robertson time once again. And today we're going through the circulatory system. The circulatory system is about the thing that circulates all around our body. It is everything to do with our blood. Blood itself I'll talk about later on, but it's the system today that is most incredibly important. And it starts off with our heart. Our heart, quite simply, pumps blood. But how it does that, and why it does that, and where it goes properly, is a step-by-step -step process to understand. So, we start off with, and I'm going to use blue for this here. On this side here, which is my right side, I'm going to have some blood come in. This here is my right atrium. I'm using the blue colour because this is blood without oxygen. It's not quite as blue as this, but it is a bit of a darker colour compared to the oxygen-rich, bright red blood that we all know very famously. It comes in here. And the heart, by the way, is divided into four different sections. And the path it takes, takes it through the right atrium and then it goes down into the right ventricle. And you may not, uh, it goes, it's still going down and it's still here without any oxygen. What happens, and you may have realized, the heart makes two sounds. It makes a first smaller squeeze, squeezing the blood down the way. And then this bit here does a bigger dub sound, and that squeezes up the way. So it's a little one down and a big one up. Le dub, le dub, le dub, le dub, le dub. That's how our heart works. So from here, we have to go back up the way. And actually we escape here. And this blood, which came from the body, has to get oxygen. This blood then goes to the lungs. And it goes to the lungs in a path that is called, can you see over here? Yes, you can. The pulmonary artery. I'll come into arteries later on. That is the pulmonary artery. And why does it go to the lungs? Well, it has to collect oxygen. I need oxygen-rich blood. So I'm gonna change my color now because when it gets to the lungs, it will come back in here as oxygen rich blood. And now I'm in my left atrium, squeezing down again to the left ventricle, and then of course, squeezing out. And you might wonder where on earth is it going now that blood, that blood will go to the body. That will pump the blood to everywhere. So on this side, on the right, it pumps just to the lungs. Half of the beat from your heart goes just to the lungs. The other side here, that pumps all the blood up to the brain, up to my hands, up to my feet. Can you see my feet? No, you can't. I can't jump high enough. There we go. This is the basic function of the heart. There are four different chambers. Now, to make my heart super, super efficient, I also put some little things in here. Each section has valves that are attached. What a valve does, basically, is if I have a tube here, I can have a valve like this. Here, if I push down here, this is going to come this way. Have a valve like this here, 
and some little bits in the side. If I push this way, I blow it open. But if I push the other way, it will close shut. The valves are there to only let blood go in one direction. It needs to continue on this path. If there were no valves, then what would happen is some of the blood would start going backwards. If they actually find this as a newborn baby, it can happen. They actually quite quickly have to do an operation to actually put in the valves and to stop any holes in the heart. The heart has to be as efficient and as effective as it possibly can be. It needs to get all of that around. We said now, it's, we've got pulmonary arteries, and here actually, I forgot to mention, this tube here taking things back is what we call the pulmonary vein. Arteries and veins are where we're going next. So, I have my circulatory system and I need to get into my arteries. Arteries come from the heart. They are therefore usually oxygen rich. They have lots and lots of oxygen. The only one that's not is the pulmonary because that's the only one that's going to the lungs, so it needs the oxygen. In fact, I should really have this covered in blue because it doesn't have the oxygen. The veins, they are what we can call instead, keep that in blue, they are oxygen poor. They don't have much oxygen. And of course, once again, the only one that's different is the pulmonary because the pulmonary vein does have lots of oxygen itself. So there is some difference there. Remember, our heart is a super strong muscle. It's beating really, really hard. That means the arteries have to cope with really high pressure. I am pressing out all of that liquid as hard as I can, with as much force as I can, so it can spread out across my body as fast as it can. To cope with this, the arteries must have thick walls. They're also very elastic. So if I had my artery like this here, it would have a really thick elastic wall. So as the blood was coming in, it could get slightly bigger and smaller and cope with the huge push coming from the heart every single second. So strong, thick, elastic walls in my arteries are absolutely important. Sadly, the other way around is for the truth of the veins. Because the blood is coming back, It'll be coming back much slower, and it'll be coming back at what we call a low pressure. And that can be a problem for people, because I need my blood to come back. I have blood in my legs now, and it has to come back up through here, really, really slowly to get to my heart. So, two tricks I have. One... Uh, once again, I have valves. So even the tiny little push, tiny little push and all the blood going round, you can give it a little bit up and then the valve closes. So it will only go in one direction. That's super, super important. But also, our muscles do something crazy too. Our muscles can also do a little bit of a squeeze. If I think about my leg, for example, if I had my vein here full of blood, I actually can use the muscle here 
and the muscle here, they can squeeze a little bit and that can force some blood to go up. So it was another very clever technique, but it's certainly much harder than it is for the arteries, which are just full of blood and pushing it round the body. Wasn't me. Final one, which I should probably do in black to be neutral, are the capillaries. They are the things that are in between. I'll do a normal S for you all. They are in between arteries and veins. So basically, the artery comes in, and the veins over here, and in the middle, this is actually what I want. This is actually the good stuff. These are the capillaries. This is where things happen. So if I want to get oxygen out, or if I want to get CO2 into my blood, or get glucose, or get hormones, or get some food, or whatever it is, it's the capillaries that do that. Here, the blood goes, slows down. The blood slows down and it goes through one cell thick. So it's like a big traffic jam. So all of the red blood cells, everything else, they have to go one at a time, single file, through all the capillaries. That's really good. Because now it's so easy to take all the oxygen from each of them. If there was one huge, big motorway full of them, those in the middle wouldn't give me their oxygen. So I wouldn't have an efficient process. The smaller I can get those capillaries, then the more I can take from them, the more I can put into my blood and the more useful my blood becomes. I'll leave that there. Thank you very much.